Hi everyone, welcome to Marika Creations. Today is all about harvest, full abundance because harvest, Thanksgiving is about abundance for me. So I will make a display and I do like this because it's huge. Uh, I didn't have a ball big enough for my vision so I decided to make one and I will also make some pumpkins to go along with it and then you will see me decorate it at the end of the video so stay tuned for all this For my first DIY I will make that bowl for my display and I've been inspired by those beautiful beautiful wooden dough bowls. I wish I had one but I don't so I need to create one. So the first thing I will do is to prop up like a mold. Then I take my chicken wire, cut it to size. And then I start shaping it around my mold. This video is part of the Hello Harvest challenge hosted by Tammy at the Rusted Willow and Ellie at DIY from House to Home. And the guest host for this month is Sun at Sun's Art. I will have links down in the description to their channels along with the link to the playlist of this challenge for more harvest inspiration. So I use my glove covered hands and pliers to bend my chicken wire into shape. Especially the corners there, I just bend them. It doesn't have to be perfect because I will cover the whole piece up with uh, concrete. That's what I'm doing here, a concrete ball. You could always use this form here with a chicken wire and make a papier mache ball as well. But I decided to go for concrete. So I have my shape now, put plastic on my mold because I still need to support it. And then I have this leftover fabric that I will tear into manageable pieces. Small rectangles like that. So time to put my gloves on again. And I have mixed concrete and it's um, illiquidy. Not very, very, but liquid enough because I will dip my fabric pieces in there and just place them out on my mold and on my chicken wire. I will continue doing that until the whole back of my bowl is covered with these concrete fabric pieces. I will overlap them, make sure that everything is covered. I don't do anything about the edges just yet. I will do that from the other side once this side has dried completely. Before I set it aside to dry, I will just put some more concrete on top of it with the help of a paintbrush. In this project there is a lot of drying time so I set this piece to dry for two days before I dared to turn it around and this is how it looks and now I have made another batch of uh, concrete this time not as liquid because I will not use as much tissue here so I'm just putting it on with my spatula smearing it on quite a thick layer to cover that chicken wire completely. As you can see I have supported the edges when I put on as much concrete here so they won't just fall apart and break under the weight of the cement. Once I have covered it completely it's time to address the edges and that I will do with more of my tissue. I just put it 
around the edge put concrete on top of it fold it around the edge and cover it completely with that concrete and I continue all the way around my bowl in the same fashion and this side as well I will let it dry for at least two three days and now I've turned it again and I have put more concrete on top of it and now the finishing touch before I set it to dry is to take a wet sponge and just smooth everything out it does not need to be perfect I want a rustic organic feel to it so just smoothing out the worst bumps and again a couple of days to let that concrete dry it has dried and now I'm putting on a base coat black satin color just one coat it will not be black in the end no worries but the base coat is black it will shine through a little bit at least one day to dry here as well and now I have turned it around and I'm taking just my sanding block to smooth the concrete out a little bit it's still a lot of texture but I want it to be soft to the touch black base coat has dried and now I am tapping with a sponge some brown and some gold just mix it in together leave uh, black showing in between no rhyme or reason really just tapping away until I am happy with the result and then set that to dry Oh, well not by itself obviously I let my hair dryer do a little bit of the drying work and then I go in with this it looks white almost but it's kind of a beige taupe color I have mixed some white a tiny bit of black and some gold and I'm putting it on almost all over the piece leaving some hints of what's underneath my aim is to make it look uh, like stone or ceramic so now that coat has dried and now I'm going in dry brushing the piece first with a black acrylic and then I will go over it with a white acrylic as well or not the white but the color I used from the start the taupe beige color you will see at the end of the video just before I decorated how it turned out my beautiful ball but before that I will get into some pumpkin DIYs to decorate this ball with for my second DIY I will take the ceramic pumpkins that I bought at Action, our local cheap store here in France and I will just paint them to mimic that ball. I will have black in the grooves and then dab brown and gold and on top of that that final taupe beige color so they will look beautiful in that ball. If you're new to my channel, hi! I am Marika and on this channel I do lots of DIYs, thrift flips, trash to treasure, decorating, renovation of my home, some pottery, some painting, anything creative really. Please join me, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and join our YouTube family. And here I am with that final coat that white a little bit of black and gold that i mixed together to create this beige taupey color not covering the whole piece and let some of the other colors shine through And 
and this is how they turned out beautiful I think looks like concrete for my third and final DIY I will make three fabric pumpkins and they will represent summer fall and winter and I'm starting off with the fall pumpkin and I have made three green pieces and three with music sheets on them and now I'm hot gluing them together just every other like you see me do here and close it up as a cylinder at the end here and then I will close one of the ends just with some thread and a needle and a double knot at the end and I will turn it right side out and then I will fill it up with some polyfill like that and then I will take my needle and thread once more and close the top and this one is done now and I will do my summer pumpkin in this sheer white fabric and my winter pumpkin in this knitted piece and this is how they turned out summer pumpkin with that lace and this is the fall pumpkin and my winter pumpkin beautiful now it's time to make the grooves in my pumpkins and I do that with some jute twine or some of that white thread use just a thick needle pull it through and tighten it as I go keep it tight and then finally tighten it with a double knot you may wonder why only three seasons because we have four right and that's because we are in fall and I take that summer pumpkin to be grateful for the season that just passed and we are in fall that is why I have the fall pumpkin and we're going towards winter so that's why I chose only three and after I'm done with the grooves I will start embellishing my pumpkins and I start out with some ribbons to cover those grooves white ones lacy ones for my summer pumpkin like that and I will cut pieces to size to fit that groove just counting the grooves I know how many to cut and then I will just take my glue gun put some on the top and some on the bottom just pushing that end into the pumpkin so I will have a nice finish and I do that all the way around for my fall pumpkin I chose this beautiful white nautical rope and my winter pumpkin got this braided jute ribbon As stems I will put in some witch hazel branches and then I take some macrame cord on this winter pumpkin and curl it do my marika curl with tabs of hot glue along the way to curl it and some full leaves same with the summer pumpkin some witch hazel and then some green ribbon and some leaves as well and then just curling the ribbon as I do and the last one is the fall pumpkin stem as well witch hazel and then some jute ribbon and some fall inspired leaves and my Rika curl is there 
now I will make some tags to put on my pumpkins and I just cut a strip like that and cut them to size and take something around to get that rounded edge punch a hole in them and make the ends a little neater as well like that cut off the corners and then I will write grateful for the summer pumpkin abundant for the fall pumpkin and hopeful for the winter pumpkin and I chose to make another one there because my abundant tag did not look that good so do it right and then I will just put it onto the stem like that and as you can see here the tag grateful I spelled it wrong but I noticed later on so I will change that out and here is my dough ball beautiful piece I think I am so happy with the result I love it what do you think and do you know how much it weighs it weighs 16 kilos that's 35 pounds so it's super super heavy sturdy piece it would have been lighter of course if you have chosen papier mache so now it's time to decorate my piece and I start out with LED candles I will end up raising them up a little bit put something underneath them witch hazel branches they are a necessity for fall decoration in my house I have these beautiful dried leaves that I will put as a backdrop in the bowl and then it's time for my winter pumpkin I prop it up a little bit with some of these twig balls same with the summer pumpkin some more of these decorative uh, twig balls and my full pumpkin like that it's pretty much full now but I have other pumpkins as you remember and I will put them up on the edges of my bowl but first a few pine cones like that and I have a couple of fabric pumpkins that I made a couple of years ago put them on the edge there and then the beautiful ones that I just painted and some decorative balls and I think I am done here Et voilà, this is how my beautiful harvest display looks like. I just love, 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 love it. I am obsessed. So tell me, what do you think of this abundant harvest display? Let me know in the comments, what do you think? And if you like this video and videos like this, hit that like button and the subscribe button of course. You will support my channel, help it to grow and I can spend more time creating inspirational content for you. And now it's time to head on over to my description box and hit that link to the playlist of this challenge for more harvest inspiration. Just click and enjoy. Thank you so very much for watching. See you soon again in my next one. Until then, take care. Bye.